In the best of the rest of the news, the Indian Point nuclear power plant sits 30 miles outside of New York City. For the most part, that plant has had a safe and reliable track record, but now there's news that two of the monitoring wells at the plant have detected high levels of tritium, a highly radioactive isotope that should not be outside the plant. While the levels of tritium detected don't currently represent an immediate health or safety risk, they raise serious questions about the continued safe operation of the Indian Point plant and about the safety of New Yorkers living around it. In the wake of the new Indian Point concerns comes a documentary film by Andrea Garbarini and Susan Rubin, two New Yorkers who live in Westchester County, close to the Indian Point plant. The plan looks at the, the plan, question mark, that's the, the title of the film, looks at the questions, the evacuation plan for those living within the 10 mile evacuation zone of the Indian Point plant. Take a look. Indian Point is an aging nuclear power plant located 35 miles north of New York City. 300,000 people live within the evacuation zone and 17 million people live within 50 miles of the plant. I'm really curious about people's plans for what they're going to do if something happens. So what's your plan if something happens at Indian Point? That is a good question. Um, we don't really have a plan. And do you know about the evacuation plan? Vaguely. I never actually heard of it before. So. Joining me now to talk more about this new movie called The Plan are its filmmakers, Susan Rubin and Andrea Garbarini. Am I saying that right, Andrea? Yes, you got it right. Thank Thanks, you. And thank you both for joining us. Um, uh, Andrea, what inspired you to make this film? Well, my friend Susan, who's sitting right next to me, um, told me about the, uh, these blue bus stops um, that are surrounding our area that are in um, a lot of the towns that are in the 10-mile radius of Indian Point. And they're basically evacuation bus stops. And you're supposed to show up at the bus stop if something should happen, if you don't have a car available, and Liberty Lines is going to show up and take you away. And that didn't seem very realistic. We thought it was kind of funny, so we decided to make a short film. But what we ended up making a movie about was not so much the bus stops as much as the plan itself, which is really very absurd. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I'm not generally superstitious, although when Mercury goes retrograde, I get a little weary, but, or wary, excuse me. But um, I remember Louise and I, my wife and I, going to see uh, the China Syndrome, you know, the movie with Jane Fonda. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, as I recall, or maybe it was just a few days later, virtually the scenario in that film happened at Three Mile Island. And, yes. you know, the whole country was going, what? <laughs> you know, because we'd all seen the movie yeah. and then it happened. Are you guys worried about what might happen now that this movie is out? No, but what we're really trying to do is get people inside the 10-mile zone and the other 20 million people in the 50-mile zone to just start to really look at this plan because I think once you start to look at the plan, you realize that the emperor has no clothes. This so, isn't a plan. So what is the plan? Uh, uh, the, either. Well, the plan, I think, should be to demand a live drill and um, to insist that we, we don't give this nuke plant another license to operate for another 20 years. And okay. I think there's plenty of reasons well, what to is, do that. What, I mean, Andrea, Andrea, what is the actual plan? The actual plan is that if something should happen, you're supposed to be instructed to either stay in your home or immediately evacuate. And there's no way, I mean, we interviewed Ralph Nader in the film, and Ralph Nader brought up a good point. Only 20% of cars on the road during rush hour are the actual number of what, you know, is trying to get from point A to point B. Could you imagine if something should happen, and if it was only 20% during rush hour, if everybody got in their car and tried to leave? And the evacuation plan actually sends you south. south. It to goes New York south. City, and we're supposed to drive south. Yeah, we're just right into Russia. We know that right into traffic. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, the, the the accident won't happen during rush hour, right? right? I mean, it just can't. Oh, or yeah, during it's already a been decided. Snowstorm. Yeah. Snowstorm, it won't happen. Right. I mean, it's just not realistic, and we are just saying we demand, we want to demand a plan that is actually something that would work, and there really isn't one. So we don't think that the plan should really be 
you know, in existence. So, so Susan, who's... Whose decision is this to make? Is it the governor? Is it the legislature? Is it the NRC? I mean, uh, who, all, if ultimately you're trying to lobby somebody here, other than waking the public the hell up, uh, who is it that you would be lobbying? Okay, so it would start locally in our, in our communities, and then from there it would go to the counties, namely Westchester County. From there it goes to New York State. From there it goes to FEMA. Okay, and then, then the NRC gets involved, but really the NRC isn't directly involved. It's more of a county, state, and FEMA issue. And I really do believe that if we got mobilized, we could stop this. So if, I mean, this, if, if a new plan would start at a local level, are, have the two of you started putting together an organization, or is anybody putting together an organization to create that local plan that can then you know, go to the various town councils and on the way up through that chain of command that you just talked about there? Uh, I believe it was Susan or Andrew. Well, we, Either well we, um, you know, we spoke with Ralph Nader, and he gave us some really good ideas on basically just rallying the troops and really trying to get in a grassroots level, you know, people aware and involved and really having them talk to their, you know, emergency service people in the area and ask, demand a plan, you know, and a grassroots level, we can start saying, hey, you know, is there a plan in place that would get us out of here safe? Right. And I think that's one way of starting. And what else do you think, Susan? Well, I think what we want to do now is we're kind of trying to collaborate to really put together just a one-page um, list of questions that any citizen can ask of their town supervisor, of their local police and fire, and work it up the, up the ranks that way. Right. Um, but, you know, we've been so busy just getting this <laughs> film out there. Yeah. Um, well, you've so done, a, you've now done that a great it's... job of it. You've, yeah, we're out of you. time. Susan and Andrea, thank you so okay. much for being with us.